Hi, my name is Ann Dettelbeck and I'm with the Washington State Department of Ecology. The purpose of this video is to explain sampling techniques required by the Washington State Construction Stormwater Permit for construction sites. This video will help you collect and analyze samples to provide the most accurate results possible. Some effort is required to prepare for stormwater sampling in order to produce meaningful results and to meet permit requirements. This video will take you through that process step by step. Construction sites are required to sample the following parameters, either turbidity or transparency, and pH. The Department of Ecology requires sampling these parameters because they are good measures of water quality and because construction sites can alter these water quality parameters. Turbidity is a measure of water clarity. Higher turbidity means the water is less clear and more materials are suspended in the water. In the state of Washington, turbidity is the primary test used to look at construction stormwater discharge. Turbidity is the measure of light scattered due to the presence of particles in the water. It is documented in Nephilometric Turbidity Units, or NTUs. The muddier the water, the higher the levels of turbidity will be. Turbidity often increases sharply during a rainfall, especially in developing watersheds, which typically have relatively high proportions of construction with open areas of soil. Suspended materials such as soil particles and other materials in water can clog fish gills, reduce resistance to disease in fish, lower growth rates, and affect egg and larval development. As the particles settle, they can blanket the stream bottom, especially in slower waters, and smother fish eggs and aquatic insects. Reduced water clarity can also increase water temperature, lower oxygen in the water, and block light to aquatic plants. Soil erosion is the most common source of turbidity from construction sites. Soil particles can enter streams and rivers from construction sites in three ways. First, rain can fall on a construction site and wash away dirt to local streams and rivers. Second, vehicles or construction workers can track sediments onto local roadways where the sediment is then rained upon and washed into local streams directly or from stormwater drains. Third, wind erosion can carry exposed sediments into the air, which is then transported from rain into local waterways. Construction sites that need to retain sediment usually have a stormwater retention pond or other devices to prevent sediment from entering local streams. pH is a term used to indicate the alkalinity or acidity of a substance as ranked on a logarithmic scale from 1.0 to 14.0. Acidity increases as the pH gets lower. High pH is considered alkaline or basic. The term logarithmic means the difference between two whole values is tenfold. For example, a pH of 5 would be 10 times more acidic than a pH of 6 and a pH of 4 would be 100 times more acidic than a pH of 6. pH affects many chemical and biological processes in the water. Most freshwater aquatic animals prefer a pH in the range of 6.5 to 8.0. Outside this range reduces the diversity in the stream because it stresses the physiological systems of most of the organisms and can reduce their reproduction. Low pH can also allow toxic elements and compounds to be mobilized and taken in by aquatic plants and animals. Low or high pH can be toxic to aquatic life, particularly to sensitive species such as salmon. For example, a pH over 10 can kill a salmon in minutes. Construction sites can alter pH in two ways. One way is during concrete pouring and curing. The second way is soil stabilization methods that use amendments such as Portland cement treated base, cement kiln dust, or fly ash. If it rains before these substances are cured completely, the water can dissolve chemicals and wash off into the streams. The chemical properties of these substances can change the pH of a stream from a normal range to a high pH, or basic range.